Now let's get some insight on what we can expect for the upcoming wet and hurricane season. Presenting the 2019 wet and hurricane season outlook is Mr. Kenneth Coe, climatologist at the Trinidad and Tobago Meteorological Service. Thank you, Yogita. And I think this is where it becomes interesting. So I'm going to get right into it. Starting in January, we witness a significant number of dry days, that is days with no rainfall, and this resulted in the just concluded drier than usual dry season. At Piaco, for instance, January alone had 23 days with no rainfall. 14 of these were consecutive dry days. February was the driest with 21 of 28 days counted as dry days, of which 17 were consecutive. In March, we had 22 dry days with 12 consecutive dry days, while April had 19 dry days with 9 occurring consecutively. Ladies and gentlemen, the hot and dry conditions continued in May, where we had only 10 dry days, but the rainfall recorded um, was not as much as average. Because of the extreme dry conditions, we have witnessed the environment being ravaged by bushfires, um, and this has relate, related adverse impacts in, in, in the water catchment areas due to the lack of interception by rainfall and by, by, of rainfall by trees for example, and the underlying leaves. This would lead to greater runoff and the chance of flooding currently is elevated. So in other words, we are saying that the environment is primed for a wet season flash flood. With that in mind, we ask you to be ready, weather ready and climate smart by using the Met Office forecast to prepare As I go into this temperature forecast for the 2019 wet season, I want you to remember the videos that every point on the map I'm about to show you, there exists the possibility for below, near, and above average outcomes, but the color on each map represents the most likely category, the category with the highest probability and the category that we favor to occur. So, the seasonal outlook for temperature for the wet season suggests warmer than usual days and nights are likely to persist with above average maximum day temperatures and above average minimum night temperatures over the period June, July, August, as well as September to November. As a result, our concern for short duration hot spells and increased number of hot days are also elevated especially for August to October, when we expect very hot and extremely humid conditions. So what is driving our current climate night right now? Well, firstly, it is a mixture of cooler than average, warmer than average, and average sea surface temperatures, depicted there by blue, brown, and white colors. But this is partly responsible. Remember I showed you where areas in this Pacific can control our weather and climate. So secondly, ocean temperatures in the Central and Eastern Pacific Ocean, which tend to affect our, lo affect our local climate, are currently warmer than usual with a weak El Nino present. Currently, the Met Office El Nino outlook is in El Nino warning as the ongoing El Nino is forecast to persist well into the wet season. And this now takes me to the wet season. Overall, we are predicting that June to December is likely to be near average in terms of total rainfall. Nationally, we tend to receive about 1,643 millimeters of rainfall for Trinidad and about 1,408 millimeters for Tobago. And this suggests that we are going to see the usual number of extreme wet spells. That is at least one prolonged wet spell 
A wet spell here is three days of rain or more. At the same time, the Met Office is indicating contrasting outlooks for the early wet season compared to the late wet season. The early wet season is June, July, August. The late wet season we consider the September, October, November, and perhaps parts of December. For the early outlook for the early wet season, June to August shows conditions are likely to be less wet than usual, with below average rainfall totals expected across both islands. And this suggests that there's going to be a gradual increase in rainfall occurrence, even though we declared the start of the rainy season today. However, there is still concerns for flash floods during heavy and prolonged rainfall events during this three-month period because this period is usually the wettest period of the year. Below average in this period doesn't mean no rainfall. It just means reduced amounts of rainfall. But remember that it is the wettest period of the year, so reduced amounts could still be significant amounts of rainfall during June, July, August. So, for the three-month period, September to November, we see a shift towards wetter than usual conditions, having the best chance, and we have the concerns for flooding is elevated during this period. So, we urge you to prepare. Don't panic, but prepare adequately. It is possible for us to get below average rainfall totals that range from 91 millimeters in southwest Trinidad and Tobago to near 280 millimeters in June. I placed that there so that you could see that it's still a substantial amount of rainfall that is expected during this, the early part of the wet season, even though the season is likely to be below average. This takes me to the hurricane season outlook. There are a number of international hurricane agencies producing hurricane forecasts for this entire region, as you see here in white. This is known as the main development area. At the Met Office, we are more concerned with this area because it is this area where we are calling the area of interest to Trinidad and Tobago, where if a storm forms, then we tend to be threatened. So our prediction for this area is what I'm about to present. But before I do that, I want to remind you what I said earlier. No matter what the forecast says, it takes one storm to make it an active year for Trinidad and Tobago. And we just saw last year, it does not have to be a storm. So we urge you to prepare adequately regardless of what the predictions is. Now, during August to October, which is the height of the hurricane season, we are seeing the forecast for the area that I just highlighted in red is going to produce near average temperatures in our area of interest. So, for the current hurricane season, we are predicting a 77% chance for above average hurricane seasonal activity in the area of interest for Trinidad and Tobago, with a much smaller chance of 13% for near average, and a very small chance, 10% chance, for below average seasonal activity. In line with this, we expect the number of storms to range between three and six named storms, but the most likely number of storms is expect, that is expected to form in this area is likely to be four, of which one to two can become hurricanes, but the most likely is one. So based on this, the tropical cyclone risk for Trinidad and Tobago is near normal. So we were affected by breath, so we are not out of the hurricane belt, as some believe. So, in summary, a drier than usual start to the wet season is likely. 
to be followed by a wet and unusual late season. Both day and night temperatures are likely to be warmer than usual. Flood potential remains high. And along with this, above average tropical cyclone activity is likely in the area of interest. So remember, it only takes one flood event or one tropical cyclone for the wet season to be an active one for us. Take note that disasters don't plan ahead, but you can. Now is the time to take early action so that you can be prepared to mitigate and to reduce the impacts that are going to come during the wet season. Be ready, be prepared, stay informed with the Met Office monthly rainfall and temperature forecast updates on our website and other means. And remember also that dangerous and severe weather are always possible, no matter what the forecast says. So I ask you to stay connected with the Met Office. I thank you.